Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sanjeev Mani from Indian Radiologist. Today I will be speaking on liver segments as we see them on ultrasound as well as on common hepatic lesions that we come across in our day-to-day -day practice. But first, let's go straight to the liver segments. Now we know them very easily on CT scan but it's very easily seen on ultrasound as well. And the way of uh, classifying these uh, segments on uh, ultrasound is the same system as well. It is a QNO classification of hepatic segments where the liver has been divided into eight segments based on the vascularity as well as the biliary radicals. That is, each segment has its own inflow of blood, outflow of blood as well as a biliary radical. So it's a very simple way to differentiate it and know these segments on ultrasound. But first, let us understand how they are labeled. So it's uh, pretty simple. You start from the left lobe and uh, we go 2, 4, 8, 7, that is 2 and 4 are the left lobe of liver, 8 and 7 are the right lobe of liver. Now these divisions are made by the hepatic veins, that is the right hepatic vein, the middle hepatic vein as well as the left hepatic vein and I'm going to show you how on a demo. As we go below this level, the level of the portal vein as it crosses through the liver becomes the benchmark for the segments below these four segments. So the four segments that are below these segments will be 6 that lies below 7, will be 5 that lies below 8, 4 is actually divided into 4a and 4b and there will be 3 that lies below 2. So simple way to remember is multiples of 2 you go 2, 4, 8 from left to right and then go downwards. So again from 8 there will be 7, there will be 6, 5, 4 and 3. So let's find out how this works out. So again if we come to this diagram once more we have 2, 4, 8, 7. We're going downwards, right? So below 7 will be 6, and then 5, 4, and 3. And we have the hepatic veins that divide 2, 4, 8, and 7, and the portal vein level which divides 3, 4, 5, and 6. One, of course, happens to be the caudate lobe. So let's start scanning. We'll here at the top of the liver, you can see the IVC over here. This is the right lobe, and we can see the right middle as well as the left hepatic vein. So you can see the right hepatic vein here, middle hepatic vein here, left hepatic vein here. So if we pause right here, I have the right hepatic vein and the middle hepatic vein. So we got to know that the segments are between over here, here as well as here. Let's go back a bit. So if we pause here as well, you can see left hepatic vein, middle hepatic vein and right hepatic vein. So this segment over here to the left of the left hepatic vein becomes segment 2, this becomes segment 4, so 4a because it is at superior level. This segment between the middle hepatic vein and the right hepatic vein will become segment 8 and the one to the right of the right hepatic vein will become segment 7. So we have 2, 4a, 8 and 7. Okay, Once again clearly seen, dome of diaphragm, right branch middle branch, so this is segment 7 and segment 8. Now let's move down and what we see here is the portal vein. So this level marks the difference between the superior and the inferior segments. So if you remember the segment below 7 was 6, the one below 8 was 5, the one below 4a is 4b and the one below 2 is 3. So it is at this level onwards and inferiorly that we will mark the lesions in those particular segments as 6, 5, 4B or 3. So as we go on, we see the main branch of the portal vein here and we move inferiorly towards the kidney. So this is the inferior aspect of the liver we know. So when we see the kidney and we see corresponding liver tissue there, that becomes segment 6. So let's try to understand this by seeing some common cases that we come across in our day-to-day -day practice. So this is the first one. Again, right lobe of liver, we know that. This is the right branch. This is the middle branch of the hepatic vein. So anything to the right of the right branch of the hepatic vein will be in segment 7. So what we are seeing here is a small little granulomatous lesion or a calcified lesion in segment 7. Benign condition, leave alone lesion. Next case, again we see a cystic area, we know it's a cyst, it's clear, thin walled, 
aquan ultrasound or hypoechoic with uh, posterior acoustic shadowing you're seeing the kidney right here so this is at a level below the portal vein so you see kidney here you see uh, the right lobe of liver and hence this becomes a lesion in segment 6 so like i said characteristics of hepatic cyst these are these are very clear well defined thin walled posterior acoustic enhancement that you see which is a classic ultrasound artifact that helps us differentiate these lesions and know that they are cysts and of course the location adjacent to the kidney and in the lower part of the right lobe of liver actually it is below segment 7 so this becomes segment 6 we move to our next case now and uh, we have a young male about 40 years old with uh, fever and right upper quadrant pain you see again a lesion which is fairly well defined however it has got a lot of internal echoes within it and uh, as you can see it's in the upper half of uh, the liver this happens to be the dome of diaphragm and this happens to be in the right lobe of liver so we got to find out in which segment this is okay that's the kidney so this would be segment six so it's higher up so once again we make our probe transverse Look at the lesion, look at the kidney and you know it is higher up and we can check and look out for these hepatic veins right here and uh, what we can see once again, I'm looking down to see that there's nothing in segment 6 but as I go up along the level of the hepatic veins, you see this lesion right here and uh, as we trace the hepatic veins, you know this is right and middle and we try to assess where exactly this lesion is. Put on the Doppler and if I pause it right here, that's our dome of diaphragm. That's the IVC, that's right branch, that's the middle branch and you see the lesion to the right of the right branch and hence this lesion is a segment 7 lesion. Once again you can see this, 3 hepatic veins, in fact the right branch is getting deviated, that's left, middle and right. So this lesion is a segment 7 liver abscess. Usually liver abscesses end up in the right lobe of liver because of sequential blood flow in the portal vein because uh, the amoebic infection usually lies in the cecum and ascending colon and that flow usually ends up going towards the right branch of portal vein and hence the area of the right lobe of liver usually segments 7 and 8 uh, happens to be a common spot for amoebic lesions. We move to our next case now. So once again this is a tricky case because this patient came with a calcified lesion in the liver However, the PET CT showed high metabolic activity, which was very unusual. So we had a look on ultrasound and you can see a calcified lesion right there. We will check where the lesion is. This lesion is in segment 4B as it is to the left of the portal vein. You see a calcified lesion, but just next to that lesion, you are seeing another hypoechoic area right there. So you see the calcified lesion, you see a hypoechoic lesion. So you know it's a new lesion. This patient was case of CA colon. The calcified lesion was an old lesion in the liver and uh, the patient unfortunately had developed a new hypoechoic area which came up on the PET CT but uh, when we did the ultrasound and we go back to the PET CT you can see that uh, that's the calcified lesion but there is another abnormality right there in the left lobe. Once again another case, liver, right lobe, IVC, right branch small lesion right there under the diaphragm to the right of the right hepatic vein so hence segment 7. One more lesion again thick walls, edematis, internal echoes, patient had fever and uh, epigastric pain so you know this is an abscess all right it's an abs abscess in the in the liver now we want to know which segment this is okay so once again we're looking at left lobe actually because you can see the heart right there and that's the stomach so this happens to be in the left lobe almost hitting the capsule and again we will look at the, the section where we see the hepatic veins. If you're seeing the hepatic veins right there, you can see the middle hepatic vein there and you can see the left hepatic vein there. So this lesion lies between the middle hepatic vein as well as the left hepatic vein as well as to the left of the left hepatic vein as well. So this lesion lies in segment 2 and 4A. So when we put on the color, of course we are getting some artifacts from the heart, but uh, you can see that left branch, left hepatic vein there and the right hepatic vein right here. So 
So this happened to be a lesion in segment 4A and 2 of the liver. Our next case, once more, IVC, dome of diaphragm, right branch, middle branch, left branch, segment 2, segment 4A, segment 8, segment 7. So let's see where this lesion is. We're going down at the level of the portal vein. So what was below segment 7 will be segment 6. What was below segment 8 will be segment 5. Below 4A is 4B and below 2 would be 3. And we see this lesion. Alright. So again, what is it? Thin wall, cystic, acoustic shadowing. It's a hepatic cyst. So we don't see it at the level of the hepatic veins. In fact, we see a level at or below the portal vein. So it is in the inferior segments. So now you've got to know whether it's 6, 5, 4B or 3. So we don't see it here, but we see it below. And we see it to the left of the portal vein. So this happens to be below segment 4A and hence this happens to be segment 4B. What is it? It's a simple cyst in segment 4B of the left lobe of liver. Our next case. Again, IVC, right, middle, left, 2, 4, 8, 8, 7. Let's move on. So, we have now moved below those hepatic veins. We've moved at the level of the portal vein. So, again, when we are at the level of the portal vein, you've got to look what was above this. And what was above this? It was segment 4A above this. So, this will be segment 4B. What do we see? Uh, slightly regular, but uh, pretty echogenic and Pretty homogeneously echogenic lesion seen in the liver. Commonest condition is a hemangioma. Common and leave alone lesions. Now, this again was an interesting case. We see lesions in the right lobe of liver. So initial look was hemangioma, but when we look very closely, a few of them, in fact, about three, four were there in number. However, some of them had a slightly hypoechoic area inside. You can get them in atypical hemangiomas, you get, can get them in large hemangiomas. But I believe we would want uh, further investigation, probably a triple phase CT to confirm this finding. We now move uh, to another case and here you can see an irregular outline of the liver. And uh, this is a patient with cirrhosis, a known alcoholic and clearly defined irregular left lobe. But as you move to the right lobe, you see a large echogenic lesion, not like a hemangioma of course, although it's, it's fairly homogeneous, but you have a slight central echopore area. And we're seeing this in the right lobe and in a patient with cirrhosis, the first diagnosis and only diagnosis that comes to mind is a hepatoma. Always, always check for portal vein. All right, you have, you may be doing a, a simple ultrasound and you say, why should I put on color? Not a bad idea to put on color to see the vascularity of the lesion in the liver, the hepatoma, as well as to see portal vein for tumor thrombosis. So this should always be done even if the request is not for a Doppler study. We come to another case. What do we see? Again, this patient of cirrhosis, we're seeing a very dirty picture, all right? But if you look carefully, what we do see is a mass out here. You can see a mass lesion right there. So this also turned out to be a hepatoma, but look closely at the portal vein. You see it echogenic, it's filled with material inside, and this is tumor thrombus. It's extension of the tumor into the portal vein, causing portal vein thrombosis. So this is a very common or should I say not so uncommon condition that we see in hepatomas, especially those that uh, come up quite adjacent to the portal vein. Of course, we put on color, you can see a slightly tram track appearance right there, but you do not see the clean flow that we associate normally with the portal vein. So this condition is a mass region, a hepatoma with tumor thrombus formation within the portal vein. Once again, the lesion lies adjacent to the portal vein, at the level of the portal vein, so it can't be the upper segments, it's the lower segments, this turned out to be a lesion in segment 5 as well as 6. Another case over here, again, what's the lesion? So what you see, this patient was asymptomatic, actually routine checkup, medical checkup. Again, hepatic veins, right and middle, you see the lesion adjacent to the right hepatic uh, vein, uh, just below the diaphragm. It looked like an old infective lesion or old, uh, we saw some slight limb calcification also in it. So again, middle hepatic, right hepatic, diaphragm lesion, this happens to be segment 7. What was it? It turned out to be an old hydratate. As the patient had history of having hydratate uh, infection in the past with a clear unilocular cyst about 15-20 years ago, the patient had preserved his records 
and you can see hydrates in various uh, forms. You can see them as unilocular sometimes, sometimes you can see dotesis, you can see uh, uh, ruptured hydrates sometimes going into the lung. You can also see a water lily sign because of uh, collapse of the endocyst, the membrane. However, nowadays we see hydrates is uh, not so common like we used to maybe a decade ago. One more case, CA ovary. And as soon as you put your probe on the liver, you see these multiple echopore lesions, hypo as well as hyper. And uh, instantly you know this is liver metastasis. You see it studied in both lobes, both the left side as well as the right side. And this is uh, quite a simple diagnosis case of liver metastasis involving both lobes of liver. So with that, we come to the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did like it, please do comment, like or share. And once more, there's a shout out for Sonobus, the conference that's on site, in person, and whatever you call it, we're going to have a great time. It's on Jan 8th and 9th. Details are on our website, indianradiologist.com. Have fun and take care this Sunday. Bye-bye.